we're back again with the 1926 Kissel restoration. And here you see that the door actually works beautifully. A little bit interior shot as we pull out back through the back. And now we're going to let you see how we fixed the battery box. When Kissel built the battery box door, they actually had this piece right here over it. Plus they had this over it, which means you couldn't take the door out without undoing this seat track and undoing this surround for the shift and emergency brake, which is ridiculous. So what has been done is this has been changed. What we've done is added a rounded edge here, rounded this edge here. The springs have been remade, but they were original. Kissel actually had them. A little rubber, rubber it's actually leather covers, what Kissel had, and it's a piece of leather. We took a little bit off the back here and a little bit off here. This allows you to place the battery box door in. You have to keep it towards the rear. Use the finger hole, push it down, and now push it forward. And once it's pushed forward, you see we have, there's a gap in the floor, but there's no gap showing you the road down below, so we're not going to get a bunch of dirt and dust through there. The little springs are holding it in place on the side. It's up under the floorboard and it's under here and all of that was done with everything in place. So yes it's a modification of what Kissel had but it at least makes it usable so you can get to your battery without taking the car apart completely. Now we're back looking at the back portion of the car and you can see we put the foot rail in place. The grate for the heaters temporarily in place. This is so we can check to make sure everything fits right or if it actually fits screws for them. Also, that black piece above the old carpet has been completely repaired and refinished. That's a seat holder. Looking here, a number of additional small parts have been refinished and added to our collection of things that are not currently mounted on the car. The green parts are Brewster green color. That is not probably the color Kissel called it. We really don't know what they call it in 26, but it sure as heck matches a Brewster green. That's what the car is being repainted in. Here you can see I'm working on repairing the firewall. What's going on here is most of the firewall is actually in good shape. There's some minor cracking and there's some problems with uh, some of the screw holes not being good. They're being doweled with birch dowels to make them possible to have solid mountings for the screws. Other little pieces are being fixed there. In every way possible I'm endeavoring to keep the original wood in the car whenever we can. Here you can see we're looking back inside the car. You can see most of the area underneath the dash has now been painted black and preserved. Looking back outside, you also notice that almost everything's gone from the firewall. Many little parts have been removed because we're going to be removing the body shortly. And you can see we've done a lot of work to the firewall and it doesn't have the cracks if you remember from earlier videos. Here are the floorboards that were Kissel original floorboards that we modeled after. We're keeping those for future reference. We have a four-door sedan we're probably going to do. Right here I'm working more on those problems with that firewall, for example. All the screw holes that held the aluminum trim were basically shot. They have been all doweled, so every single one of them will be tight and appropriate now. And none of that, of course, shows when the car is put together. It is done properly and I'm continuing to work on the firewall here. Now you can see how nice the firewall has become. Sure, it's not painted up nice, but it looks nice. Here we have a shot of the front brakes, front of the frame. All these items are shortly going to be removed so that we can have the frame sandblasted professionally, which will save us some time. Looking down the side of the car, you can see these special nuts for the Lando irons have been totally refinished. They're just mounted on the car finger tight. Here I am painting a piece showing Trish a trick that all of you could use. I am using a spray can, nothing wrong with that, on a piece that's totally stripped. But the thing that's really neat is it's sitting on six nails. If you notice that, you flip it right over while it's wet and you paint the other side. When you pick it up when it's dry, you'll never even notice that you painted it that way and had six nail points on the one side. It is a really neat trick to do something really fast that turns out beautiful. And you can notice how I spray paint. Use a spray paint can the way you're supposed to. The finish will look absolutely gorgeous. 
Here you can see the actual firewall brush painted because that's what it looked like Kitchell did. So we did brush paint it because that appears to be how they did it. And you're looking at the coil mount, totally refinished, 100 years old. You can actually read the lettering on it just like when it was brand new. And that's all been done, including the plating for it. Right here, we are looking more about what's going on in the area of the engine. You'll notice we've got the mounts there for the hood props. Looking back in the cabin, you'll find out that we redid the mount for the accelerated pedal, got all the painting, etc. done there, finished screw work done there. And the steering column is now completely missing. We have taken it out of the car so we can lift the body, which is going to come up in the next video. Something that's going to be probably the most interesting thing we've done. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next time around.